Hi, I'm Mike Gubby from I Sleep Blinds. Thank you for watching. In the next three videos, I'm gonna show you how I can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on the installation of the plantation shutters in your home. Now, the way we save you money is the price per square meter of the product itself. We save you money on the cost of freight, and I, we also save you money by not having to pay an installer $50 per panel for the installation of plantation shutters in your home. In this first video, I'm gonna take you through and explain everything you need to know about plantation shutters and what frame options that you've got to come out with a great result and install things correctly in your home to have a result that you're gonna be happy with. In the second video, I'm gonna show you my easy step-by-step -step guide on how to build the plantation shutters yourself and how to assemble everything perfectly so one step leads to the next step and once again, come out with an awesome result. In the third video, we're gonna put our installer hats on and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need and how to go about installing the plantation shutters. Now these three videos are gonna be very thorough and they're all aimed towards uh, giving you a fantastic outcome, which is what we all want. So I urge you to watch this information. And if you've got a tricky window or something that I say just doesn't make sense, you can leave a comment on our YouTube channel or you can call us directly. And when you do, the answers that we're gonna provide you are really gonna make sense and enable you to move forward with your project. Now on the iSeq Blinds website, there's three really important parts of information that you need to see. The first one is our check measure worksheet, and that's got the key of information on the back and it'll explain the questions that we ask really thoroughly for you. And that also goes uh, in order of how you order your plantation shutters on the iSeq Blinds website. The next bit of information that's really important is our, uh, what's this one, our panel layout chart. So you can see it shows you pictures and dimensions of a single panel, a double panel, a triple panel, different positions to put your T-posts, and it also goes through there in the back to show you four and six panel installations. Again, really helpful. The next bit of information that we have on the website is a download of what the sizes of the components are. So it'll show you what the frames look like, the exact sizes, and also that's on both sides there, the T-posts, the U-channels, all that part of the information there. Now, the only thing you need to get started at this stage is your tape measure and a pen. Uh, make sure you've downloaded the check measure worksheet so you can keep your notes in order. And a couple of pro tips before we begin. The first thing is, I've been saying this for years now, but less is more and you must follow the window. And the second pro tip is that plantation shutters always work from left to right. And that's exactly how we take the measurements that I'll explain to you in a few moments. And when I walk in the front door of a home, I turn left, and that becomes window number one. And then I work clockwise right around the home until I get back to the front door. If I go up the stairs, again, I keep turning left until I get to the first window. And then once again, go clockwise right around the home so I can finish and keep everything nice and neat and everything in order. Now, continuing on, I'm now gonna talk about what the parts of a plantation shutter are and what options that you have to install the plantation shutter so you can use this information, take the information to your window and exactly work out what you need to do and how you're gonna get a fantastic outcome. So thanks again for watching. Uh, if you like the information, can I please ask you to subscribe and um, like the iSeq Blinds YouTube channel. There's gonna be a lot more videos being done about our, our roller blinds, our automation, about retrofitting our roller blind motors into your home, about our beautiful shear curtain program that we make right here in the factory where I am now. So thanks again for watching. Um, let's get straight into it and let's look at a plantation shutter. Thanks. So I'd like to explain the parts uh, that make up a plantation shutter and exactly show you uh, what that what they are and then what they're used for. So this is a two panel um, plantation shutter and it's also on an outside mount L frame, uh, which you can see on the outside there. So we call this a layout number C, which is two panels, one panel left, one panel right. Okay, now with a plantation shutter, there is a top rail, which is this part here. There is a mid rail, which is that part here. There's also a bottom rail, which is this one here. Now, we've got our blades, which we call our blades uh, here in the middle that open and close. These are our styles, and there's always two styles per panel, which is one here and one there. So those are called the styles, okay? Now, 
when you do have uh, two panels that come together like this here, the right hand panel, which is this one here, also features this little D-mold. So there's actually a little cover strip. I don't know if you can see that, but that little cover strip closes second and you can see that that covers the gap um, in the center of the plantation shutter. Now, if you'd like the D-mold to be on the left hand panel, so the left hand panel opens first, then you can just tell us that in the notes section, say D-mold on left hand panel. This is a single panel uh, plantation shutter here and it's a layout B because we can see the hinges is on the right hand side. And there's two more bits of information that I wanna provide about the plantation shutters. With this particular layout here, I wanna show you that that is a split tilt rod. So that's just exactly what we mean. And if I'm able to open that plantation shutter up, you can see that the tilt rod is actually just split into two parts. So these top four blades are connected and they move together. And these bottom blades are connected here um, separately and then they move together. So we offer you a split tilt rod if you do not have a mid rail. And we also offer you a split tilt rod above a mid rail if you do have a mid rail and you want to split the top half and I think that's fantastic for flexibility. Now when we do have a plantation shutter like this there's always a tension screw um, and you'll see the tension screw is this little cover cap right there. There's a screw that actually goes through the style and into the blade and that screw is on both sides. Okay. Now why we use that is to adjust the tension of the blades and I'm going to show you that again very thoroughly in the next few videos and exactly exactly how to tension the blade so you get everything moving nice and smoothly. So now we're getting further on our journey of uh, measuring our plantation shutters. This is where our check measure worksheet comes out and also our tape measure. And I'm gonna give you some pro tips on exactly how to do that. And I'm just gonna use this empty window behind me to show you what the components look like and exactly how they fit and just give you a bit of a feel on the different methods of installation. Now, I'm gonna explain each one of those more thoroughly when we go over there and that's got one of the plantation shutters installed. But I felt there was just a good opportunity to sort of see things in an empty window and understand exactly how they work. So I wanna talk about measuring your plantation shutters to start with. And with the measuring process, we've always got to take in the measurement in three sizes across the width and then three sizes for the drop. And then we always write down our smallest size. Of course, that's when we're doing an inside mount measurement. Uh, of the plantation shutters. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how to do that. Now, the first measurement I'm gonna take is across the top and I can read that at 1204 millimeters. The next measurement is here and I like to come across the front to see I can just eyeball the size and sort of count as I go. So I've got 1200, 3, 1203 and across the bottom here, I've got 1201 uh, in my measurement. So for my width, I'm gonna write down my 1201 size. Now for the height, I like to start from the bottom and if you can get up on a um, ladder and then you can again eyeball exactly what the top measurement is. In this instance, I can climb just at the right height. So that's 900 across there. That's 900 across there. And then that's 900 millimeters across there. So for my height, I'm writing down a size of 900 millimetres. Now, depending on what layer you choose, you may have some T-posts and you may have one T-post or you may have two T-posts or even three T-posts. And they always work from starting always from the left-hand side and coming across to where you want the center of your T-post to be. And generally that's gonna match like a natural mullion that you've got in the window. So going to T-post number one, if there was a break in the window here, we would write that size down as, you know, 300 millimeters. I mean, I know that's quite narrow, but I'm just trying to give the ex explanation. If there was another T-post here, we would start on the left-hand side and we would come right across to the second T-post and then, you know, the third T-post um, if needs be for those layouts. Now, when we're determining whether we can fit a plantation shutter inside a window frame or on the outside of a window frame, it really depends on the depth that you've got inside the recess. And what I mean by depth is this space that we've got across here. 
Now, the depth required for a plantation shutter is 65 millimetres. And that takes into consideration the front of the style, which is say there, to the back of the blades, which is there. So the distance between my two fingers is 65 millimetres. That's how we need to know if we've got the clearance to put the plantation shutter, you know, I'm oh, sorry, inside the recess and that's what we need for the 65 millimetres. So that's really important. The second thing we need to know is how does the window open? Is it a sliding window? Is it a wind out window? What opening mechanism have you got and what potential threats have you got that may obstruct the plantation shutters from going inside the recess? And I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit now. Remember, if you do have a natural break in the window and your window is quite tall, then it's likely that you're going to have a mid rail. And remember, there are no blades sort of where a mid rail is, so you can get the blades to open above the obstruction and below the obstruction. And we're going to, when we go over there, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about mid rails and the different method, uh, methods, sorry, um, of how to measuring and how to specify the exact size of the mid rail that you require. The outside measurements are from the outside edge of the architrave to the outside edge there, which is 1340 mils. Again, I'll check that there, which is the same. And I'll also check it here, which is the same. And then our height measurement always goes from top to bottom. So we can sit it under the lip there of the architrave. And I've got 1,035, I've got 1,035, and I've got 1,035 millimetres here. So lucky for me, you know, this is quite square. It's easy to progress with. Once again, T-posts are always start the measurement from the outside edge of the architrave when you are measuring for an outside mount L-frame. And we always work from here to T-post number one to the centre of where you want that T-post to be. We go back to the side of the architrave here and we measure across to T-post number two, number three, number four, etc for those styles. Now, with a layout A, B or C, which is a single panel, a single panel right hand or a double panel, there is a method called direct mount. And what that means is that the hinges are fitted directly onto the side of the plantation shutter, just like every single door that you've got in your home. And the plantation shutter is then screwed directly into the side of the recess, just like this. So that's what we call a direct mount. And generally I'll use those when we've got really narrow windows and we don't want the width of the frame or any other options to sort of make the blades narrower. So any sort of long, narrow, fixed windows, side lights, which are beside front doors, that's typically where you'll find a direct mount plantation shutter. Now with a direct mount plantation shutter, it also comes with a piece of light block, which is this little guy just here. I hope you can see that. And that light block is supplied across the top and also across the bottom of the plantation shutter. So the shutter's got something to close against. And this is also where we fit our little striker plates uh, for our magnets. The next method that I'd like to talk about is an inside mount L-frame. Better just keep that. And that's what an inside mount L frame looks like just there. And the way that's installed is like this. Typically we'll put a screw straight through the side of the L frame, straight into the side of the recess. So that's exactly where that sits there. Just flush uh, with the front of the quirk um, that you've got there. So what happens is that sits in there and then the plantation shutter sits in that little recess. So it's really good for blocking out light um, because we've got that little light block, this little piece here, um, that piece right there where the shutter actually sits against and stops the visible light from coming through. So an inside mount L-frame comes in two versions. There's a four-sided version where it goes around the four sides of your recess. And like this window here, because it's a wind out window, it also comes in a three-sided version. So it goes up the left, across the top and down the right. Now, the plantation shutter itself actually makes up the bottom of the recess. So the shutter would end up sitting sort of within the frame, which is here. 
and the shutter itself would then hinge like this and make up the bottom uh, recess just across here. Now, once again, if you do have a three-sided frame, then we also supply this little bit of light block and that sits in just like that there. So again, it's stopping the light from coming in under the plantation shutter and giving you a place to fit your magnets, okay? Now, I am gonna show you real examples of these once we get over to that side there. If you haven't got the depth inside your recess, so you've got a double hung Victorian style window, um, then you may have to put the plantation shutter on the outside of the window frame, which means fitting it straight onto the architrave. So the way we do that is with this outside mount L-frame, and you'll see in comparison to an inside mount L-frame, this one has a lot larger projection here. So what it does is it brings the panel forward so that when the blades open, the blades don't project past the back of the frame. So we're not gonna hit anything, um, which is very important. So the way we install that is with that little cover cap that just pops off the front there. And then we put a screw straight through there and we fit it straight to the outside edges of the architrave, just like that. Now, again, that comes in a three or a four sided version, but typically when you are around the outside or you are sitting down on a bull nose sill, um, it's typically always going to be a four sided L frame. So that's that option there. The next method I'd like to show you is a Z frame and you can see exactly how that got its name. This is really popular over in Perth where they have uh, double brick homes um, um, and sort of a lot of square set recesses. Or if you've got a square set recess or if your window frame is a little bit out of, out of square, then you've got that Z frame option, which is just there. So where that sits is actually inside the recess. So we measure it like we would a inside mount plantation shutter, but you can see that part of the lip just here actually comes across the front of the wall, or in this instance, comes across the front of the recess. So it actually does look really quite neat. Um, it's very forgiving, it's very easy to install, particularly if you've got tiled areas that you don't want to drill through. Sometimes I'll just actually glue this frame in with silicon. So that's measured the same way um, as an inside mount plantation shutter, and that's exactly what a Z frame looks like. Yeah. Now, if you've got a uh, internal wall cavity, um, again, a side light um, beside a front door, if you've got a tiled area that you don't want to drill into, then one of my little favorite mates is this little U-channel uh, installation method. And you can see it comes in two parts. There's the top U and there's also the bottom U. Okay, now you can use double-sided tape or you can screw it in place if you want to, but essentially the big U sits at the top and the little U sits at the bottom. And when you install the plantation shutter, you just like a wardrobe door or a sliding window, you lift it into the top first and present it over and then just drop it down and it's sitting and the U channel is actually, you know, holding the plantation shutter in place. So that's really good, I feel, for tiled areas where you may have a bathtub that's raised above the tiled lip. Um, and again, I've got an example of that over there and I'm really gonna thoroughly explain that for you. Um, so I think I've gone through everything on this plane window here. Now I'm gonna take you over to that side and I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like in real life. So this plantation shutter is an inside mount L frame that features four sides because this is a sliding window. I don't have any obstruction like a little winder here at the bottom and I've got my slider um, that I can open up. So you can see the frame goes up the left, across the top, down here, and then across there. And when the shutter closes, it actually closes into its same recess. So it provides the sort of maximum amount of light block that we can offer um, with a plantation shutter. Now, one thing I'd like to point out is that this inside mount L frame is really the most common installation method that you'll have with plantation shutters. And in my opinion, it's also the easiest and the most forgiving. Essentially, the frame is made three millimeters shorter than you measure uh, on the, the width and also three mils on the height. So what we're able to do once we build the frame is fit it inside the window. 
we're allowed to sort of move it around a little bit sort of here or there and we're able to make sure that the shutter frame itself is sitting nice and square inside the recess so that when you do close the plantation shutter you get all these beautiful straight lines that go across the plantation shutter and it ends up looking fantastic now once you've got it squared up and once you've got it set, the last thing we need to do is just put out no more gaps around the outside here. Um, and that's really easy to do and really finishes the look of your plantation shutters. The next plantation that I'd like to show you is an inside mount L frame, but this one only features a three sided frame. So we've got our frame that comes across up the left, across the top and down the right. We've got a single panel. This one is a layout B because it hinges on the right hand side. And this one is the one that also has the split tilt rod. So this gives you great flexibility, uh, blocking out the neighbors, the, the, the street light, just controlling the privacy and light that you want to come uh, into the home. So let's open it up and see exactly why I've done an inside mount L frame. And that's because you can see this winder handle right there. If I had a, a four-sided frame in this instance, by the time I fitted it, there'd be no way that my winder would be able to wind around and therefore I wouldn't be able to open my window, which is you know, ultimately what you don't want. But with I seat blinds, to stop the light from coming across the bottom, we do provide that light block, which is that square piece that I showed you before. And once again, that enables and gives the shutter something to close up against. So something that's really important when it comes to installing a three-sided frame is that it's always starts from the bottom and works up. You can't even out the gap between the top and bottom. You, you can sort of left and right, but not top and bottom, because if you do, you're only gonna raise the panel and it's not gonna sit um, nice and flush across the bottom of the recess like this one here. So it always starts at the bottom and then works up. It's really important with a plantation shutter that the bumper that's fitted under the panel here sits inside the recess um, and gives the panel support so it's not sort of sitting up in midair and it's gonna you know, drop, um, particularly for the wider panels. And while we're talking about that, I also wanna say that you know, it's not so much with this size, but when you do get to wider plantation shutters, sometimes you have to assist them if they're tall and they're wide. They won't just open and close perfectly. There is not a PVC plantation shutter on the market that does that, in my opinion. Okay, you've got to sometimes just lift it slightly and just help it close. The next plantation shutter that I wanna talk about is a direct mount plantation shutter. So what that means is that we've just taken the actual shutter panel itself and we've screwed it straight into the right of the, sorry, into the side of the recess. Now, typically we wouldn't do a direct mount if it's that wide because we'd like to introduce a frame sort of option into that plantation shutter. But for narrower windows where you don't want the width of the frame and it's a really easy, it's a fixed window perhaps, um, then a direct mount plantation shutter can really be useful um, in those applications. So once again, the shutter panel is able to open. I just wanna show you that it can open to about that place there. And with the hinges, there are two hinges on this plantation shutter. There's one set here and one set of hinges here. Now, the top and bottom hinge has a hole that's oval shaped. So if you start by putting the screw in the middle um, of each of the four oval shaped holes, then when you test it, you're able to sort of undo those screws and just slightly move the panel up or down. So that's how you do get some height adjustment with those types of installations. Now, once you do have it fitted, there's a round hole in the center, and that will then be the last screw that you're gonna put in through the hinge once you've got your height set, which is really useful. Now, a direct mount plantation shutter is also supplied with a piece of light block on the top and on the bottom, and that's where we fit our little striker plate for our magnet. So once again, the shutter has something to close against, and it also stops the light from coming in sort of through the top and through the bottom. So this guy is a inside mount uh, plantation shutter. It's what we call a direct mount. 
So I've come a little bit side on with this plantation shutter because I wanna show you that this is an outside mount L-frame. And you can see the L-frame here sitting into the face of the architrave and also flush with the outside edges of the architrave. It's really easy to install. Um, it doesn't look that bad. A lot of people say, is it gonna look terrible? Well, I think shutters always look fantastic um, when they're fitted on the windows. And this one here is a really easy way to fit a plantation shutter, particularly if you need to keep things consistent across the front of your home. Um, but also if you don't have that depth um, that you need inside the recess for the blades to be able to open and close, then this is where we use an outside mount L-frame. The Projection of the frame, which is approximately 70 mils, just means that the panel is able to sit forward. So when the blades open and close, they're not gonna hit or obstruct anything that's through um, the back of the window. You know, and the last thing you wanna do is obviously get the blades like that and they hit something, um, uh, which I have done in the past, I have to say, um, and not be able to rotate into their fully open position. You can see this shutter is dressing in the up position which is how we do all plantation shutters. Now, I've taken that little cover strip off just here, the top, and that's exactly where we put our screws. We put our screws through the L-frame into the recess, and then once we've done that, the last thing we do is just pop that little cover strip back on, just like that. And that hides exactly where our screws went through. Um, the frame is nice and secure, it's nice and hidden, and once again, you come out with a great outcome. The last installation option that I wanna talk about is my little mate, the U-Channel. It's really nice and simple to install. Uh, again, you can use it for side lights beside your front door, shutters that you don't wanna have them swinging open and closed. Um, internal wall cavities look fantastic because with this frame, you get a consistent look from both the front and the back of the plantation shutter. Um, also for bathrooms where you don't wanna drill into the tiles where you've got a raised lip of the bath um, and the shutter's not gonna be able to open and close. Um, this is exactly where we use our little U-channel, mate. Now, you can screw it into place, the U-channel, as I showed you before, in the top and in the bottom, um, or you can just use double-sided tape and then you can cork up the little gap that's sort of here across the top and bottom, you know, once you've got everything square, so it's really forgiving. If you do need to open a window, then as I showed before, you can always put your hand through the blades um, and open the bathroom window if needs be. Again, just be careful exactly when you do that. And installation of these types of plantation shutters is a real breeze. If you do want to clean the window, then you can just remove the panel, um, as I just did, and obviously wash the window. And then when you want to reinstall it, you just slide it in the top first, like that, and then come across the bottom and just let it drop there into place. Make sure you get everything sort of squared up, but that's exactly how you're able to remove a panel and reinstall a panel um, for the little U-channel, mate. Now, once again, it doesn't hinge. You can't get it to hinge open and closed, but what you can get is a fantastic outcome as a room divider or a plantation shutter that's really easy to install. So now we're gonna talk in a little bit more depth about mid rails. And this is a really important discussion, which means you're gonna specify your plantation shutter perfectly. So this is a mid rail just here. And it's important that if a shutter is greater than 1600 in height, that we must put a mid rail in place. And what that does is just provide some real stability to the plantation shutter um, by putting that mid rail there in place. Now, on our component layout chart, it does offer the size of a mid rail, which is saying is 76.2 millimetres to be exact. And that's the distance from there to there um, of this mid rail. And you can see the blades open above the mid rail and the blades also open and close below the mid rail. So once again, panels that are greater than 1600 require a mid rail. If it's less than 1600, you don't have to put a mid rail, but some people like them to match the window frames. But just remember what I said at the start of the video that less is more and you must follow the window. So sometimes they look great um, when the shutter panel you know, is less than 1600 millimeters in height. 
The measurement for a mid rail is always from the bottom of the recess, if it's an inside mount, right to the center of the mid rail, or if it's an outside mount like this one here, it's from the underside of the architrave or the frame up to the center of the mid rail. So we're always measuring the center mid rail position. Let's pretend, for example, your window is 1800 tall from top to bottom, and it's all glass from top to bottom. Then I'd love to see the mid rail at about the 40% level. So 40% from the bottom to the center of the mid rail. And then I like to split the top half of blades above the mid rail, which is what I've shown you in other videos. So that looks fantastic if you've got all glass from top to bottom. Now, if you do have a natural break in the window, then it's important that we obviously put the mid rail in that position exactly where that um, natural break is. And it's really important to note that when we talk about the depth of the required is 65 mils for the blades to be open and closed, then you can see there are no blades, you know, at the position of the mid rail. And that becomes important to note what that size is as to where we are gonna put our mid rail position. And there's two ways or two more bits of information I wanna give you about mid rails. If we call a standard mid rail, then the measurement is from the bottom of the recess to the center. And in order to make the top rail and bottom rail the same size, the mid rail can vary in height, you know, up or down, sort of half a blade to um, make sure that this uh, um, top rail and that bottom rail is the same size. And ultimately that looks very pleasing. So we've got that option, but if we've got to have a critical mid rail position, then you've got to tell us in the note section, you know, that it's a critical mid rail. And what that means is that the mid rail will be put in that exact position there so you can cover the obstruction where you haven't got that depth and the blades can open above the obstruction and obviously below the, uh, below the obstruction. Now, when you do specify the mid rail is critical, then the way the factory builds the plantation shutter or the, the shutter kit is they start with that measurement first and then everything's got to work around that measurement. So you may not feature the same size top rail uh, and bottom rail, but that's okay. We just have to accept that as, you know, it is what it is. And it's really important that when we do open and close the blades, then they don't get stuck and they don't hit any obstruction that's in behind the mid rail. So thanks.